It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Monday, April 11th, your daily dose of Flyers news analysis and high quality content that is congratulating Ronnie Adderd on his first NHL goal, announcing it better late than never. It took a little while, but he got it. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, I am your host, Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here with my amazing co-host, Russ Cohen, who's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. You can follow us on Twitter at Locked On Flyers. You'll keep up to date on all our episodes, Flyers news. You can also email the show at LockedOnFlyers at gmail.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. On today's show, we're going to talk about that game on Saturday night versus the Anaheim Ducks. We're going to talk about the Frozen Four final, which was pretty exciting. And we'll wrap up as we do every Monday with our Nemesis of the Week. Locked on Flyers is free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey. We are ever you get your podcasts, so subscribe and you'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. So Hayden Hodgson was called up for Saturday's game because Joel Farabee was out sick with a non-COVID illness. And uh, one thing I meant to look up and didn't, does that count as their recall for the season or is it because it's a repeat player They still have one more left. No, I think it's because it's a repeat player. They have one more left. That's what I thought, but I wasn't 100% sure on that. So hopefully we can still maybe. Because I think otherwise they would have done it as an emergency recall. Right, right. That's why I was curious because it wasn't an emergency recall. So they must still have that one in the bank. But I think, you know, given the results of the game, which we will absolutely talk about, the highlight of the night was absolutely uh celebrating lou nolan yeah that was nice i mean lou's a good guy uh i could tell you lou was very happy being on ice level again even though it's against the rules of the league it is and thank you to dave scott for paying whatever fine that is because it'll be it was totally worth it because i had spoken to lou once or twice this year and you know let's just say he didn't love being up in the press box area up that high you know, he, he wants to be down with the action. I don't blame him. Like, you know, it, he could do a better job that way, too, and feel like more a part of it. So that was great. The ceremony was a lot of fun. Uh, I, yeah, I thought it was just well done. I, I think it's amazing when a guy could be around 55 years in anything, any organization, anything like that. It's incredible. It is. And I must say, like, he and Ellen are the most adorable couple. Yeah. And I'm so happy they gave them a really nice vacation to go on together. Yeah, I like the way he celebrated that. That was good. It was very, very cute. All right, getting into the game itself. Obviously, it was kind of last minute, so they just slotted in Hodgson where Farabee was supposed to be on that line uh, with Lawton and Atkinson. Because why not? Uh, They're all interchangeable, right? Well, you know, at this point, right? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I did like that, you know, they're keeping that Hayes, Cates, and Tippett line together. I, I really think that, you know, they are trying to build some chemistry with Noah Cates and Owen Tippett looking in the future. And I think it balances out with having Hayes on that line. I think that, you know, Hayes had a couple moments where he struggled in this game. Oh, yeah, he, he wasn't also, he wasn't looking great. He also had like one really amazing move where he deked on a defender that was incredible. And he was taking shots. They weren't great shots, but he was kind of like firing a lot more. Than no, but I think he's. Does. He's hitting a little bit of a wall now, I think. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, his conditioning was never going to be perfect coming back again, and he had those really good games. So the only thing is, is to me, this line is completely temporary. Now, if Cates and and Tippett do get chemistry, that's great. But again, you still want Cates to be the center, and I'm going to keep trumpeting that. It's nice to have Hayes there because of the creativity, 
But this is not going to be a line next year. I can almost guarantee it. Uh, is Kate's playing at center the new sit Keith Yandel for you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, it's unfortunate. It's like I, I find these things that, that Mike Yo does, and he's going to keep doing them. And if he's going to keep doing them, I'm going to keep bitching about them if I think it's wrong. Right. No, that absolutely makes sense. And I personally want to see Noah Cates at center uh, just to you know see what he can do there. Right. Uh, speaking of centers, Morgan Frost, I think, was a bright spot in this game. I think he played tremendously well. He's working really well behind the net, especially. Uh, he had a couple of setups there, one that led to a goal that was the Sandheim goal. Mm -hmm. And um, again, you know, a really great night from the face-off circle uh, where I think he only lost one the entire game. No, he looked good, but I feel bad because like post-game he has to sort of like talk about defense first. He can't like be happy that, you know, he, he made a good play. He can't be happy that uh, he is developing. He talked about his development, but he talked about more about mistakes than positives, and I think this is all fallout from having Mike Yo as the coach because he's He's drumming in like the don't make mistakes thing. And when you're still a younger developing player, even though, you know, Frost is getting up there a little, but he's still a developing player. Uh, I don't like to see the guys dwelling on the negative first, but if you notice, they do. Yeah, I think hockey culture has a thing where if your team loses, you are not allowed to talk about the good things that you did in that game unless I would say you're the goaltender or like a situation like Ronnie Adderd where he gets his first NHL goal. So you're going to, you know, trumpet that because of course it's an amazing achievement. See, but if it were me, I would always talk about what I did well and then worry about the other stuff. That's me, but I guess you're right. But it yeah, seems like they do it more with this team though. Doesn't it? I don't know. It just uh -huh. feels like an intrinsic part of hockey culture to me, okay. that it's, it's team first in terms of how you talk about a game, you know, and, and unless there's some sort of milestone, like you can't really talk about the positive things that you do out there again, unless you're a goaltender, because usually it's not your fault that the teams lost the game. But that being said, uh, I do want to talk about what happened in this game, just from a complete turnaround between the first period and the rest of the game. And it was just such a struggle to watch because you could see it kind of happening in real yeah. time in terms of, you know, the aggressiveness wasn't there. The forechecking wasn't there. The positioning wasn't there to cut off passes. And it was just a, a completely different team. And there just seems to be no rational explanation for it. No, it was like they were like a, a tightly wound ball of yarn in the first period. And it completely unraveled in the second period. Completely. I don't know. They were outshot like seventeen to one, and I usually yeah. don't get care about shots, but it was it was it was like a total no, it domination. Was brutal. It was brutal, and you know the the part that gets you is, and and I talked to, to um Trevor Zegers post game, and I asked him specifically about his power play goal. We'll talk about the highlight reel stuff later, but but the power play goal, he literally had two steps where he could walk in and wind up a one timer and shoot. Now, he's the mm -hmm. best player on this team. Everybody knows it. The whole world knows it. So I asked him, I said, were you a little shocked that you had that much room? And he said, yeah. He goes, I don't get that much room in games. And this is my problem with Mike Yo, because if you truly are a development, developmental team, then sit Nate Thompson. If you sit Nate Thompson and that play happens, okay. But if you have veterans out there and you're leaving the best player of the team open, then sorry, I'm coming with the with you know full full guns on this because I'm not going to just give you the hey it's the end of the season they're a bad team anyhow speech I'm not going to do it. Well, and I think that was the biggest part of it for me was that everybody on this planet knows that if you're playing the Anaheim Ducks, you need to cover Zegras and Troy Terry. Like that is yes. their most potent offensive combo on the ducks they don't have a ton of depth beside that so to give that line that much space was i just think like how does that even happen and right. it, it is a 
a complete and total mystery. That being said, it was fun to watch Trevor Zegras sure. do his thing. And I personally enjoyed it because I'm a fan of his. And, Me too. Know, especially going back to the, you know, World Junior team that mm-hmm. he was on. And, I, I, you know, it's fun, but it should not have happened that way. <laughs> no. And, and, and like, you know, like the Milano goal, sure, that kind of goal is mm-hmm. going to happen. And he's a good player. He's got good hands. That one I can live with. Like, that goal happens a lot. But the way that that power play goal happened was sort of like a harbinger, like, okay, what is going on with this team now? All of a sudden, they can't do that. And, you know, to their credit, they did tie up the game. But the problem was, once it became 4-3, and I, again, asked Zegers about this, did he feel like things were sort of like loosening up on his side where they could just have fun offensively and open it up. And he said, yeah, you know, games have turned into this lately where it's like this tight battle for a little while. And then all of a sudden, you know, things open up. And if Trevor Zegers knows that, shouldn't the Flyers coaching staff know this? Yeah. I wonder if it's a trend for teams that are already out of it versus teams that are still in the it could be. They're- there could be a difference there, but yeah. But you I should guess, know about it if you're coaching. You should. And I think, you know, that's probably the most disappointing thing about it for me. You know, again, there were some bright spots in this game, like we talked about, but I think that, you know, this is a prime example of what has been going wrong with the Flyers this season. But now the, the, the play that he made sort of like turning Cam York around and then doing a spinorama, no look pass. Like yeah. that's just tremendous talent. And the, the fact that he has guts and really the um, trust that his player is going to be where the pass is going to be. It, it was amazing. Um, but he did joke around post game where he said, I told York when I was out there, I was going to score a goal on him. He goes, I'm really kidding, but I did say something to him. And, you know, they're good friends. You know, apparently Zegers lived with Cam York's brother. Uh, They played together on the NTDP. So they're good friends. They met after the game, too. But this does show you where if you think that Cam York is a top-pairing guy, that he has a long way to go because Trevor Zegers is, you know, one of probably the, you know, 10 hardest guys maybe to cover in the league. And so, like, this is something that if Cam York does want to be a top pairing guy, he's going to have to do better because Zegers had two goals on the evening. Well, we have a lot of hockey for the Flyers to play this week in order to try and fix some of that, especially, again, with our our younger guys like Cam York. But we're going to talk about an even newer potential flyer hopefully flyer in a couple of days in bobby brink and the ncaa frozen four final coming up next i want to take a moment to talk to you about athletic greens i started using athletic greens because i wanted better gut health more energy optimized immune system and hated taking pills vitamins and i wanted a supplement that actually tastes great taste is good I, i can attest to that With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All the things. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's lifestyle-friendly whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Athletic Greens contain less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. Athletic Greens supports better sleep quality and recovery, and it supports mental clarity and alertness. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop in one cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. 
Thanks for making it Locked On Flyers your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. It's nightly recaps of every NHL game with analysis from all our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So we have a winner in the Frozen Four this year in Denver, which I think maybe surprised some people by winning 5-1 to one over Minnesota State in the Frozen Four final. And uh, two of those goals were empty netters. So let's <laughs> make sure you understand what the margin is here. Yeah. But that being said, Minnesota State has been absolutely ruthless in the entire tournament defensively. And just to see, like, Denver just turn on a switch in that third period and be able to come back from being down one nothing, and just really decisively score three goals in that period, I think was pretty remarkable. Yeah, I was warned that Denver is a, is a good team. And because the way I kind of deal with college hockey is, like, I cover out of the ECAC, but I'm covering mostly prospects. I don't keep up with the daily day-to-day stuff and then i sort of latch on you know towards the regionals and everything and so i don't really try and be an expert you know with this stuff but um what i think happened and again i couldn't watch this game live i'm going to be watching it later today just for the fun of it Uh, i think what really happened here is i think um denver i think they did gain momentum after beating michigan right because that's a big Because, again, I think we all can make the argument now that if Michigan did advance, they probably would have won. Yeah, I I, I think that. And but I think when Denver beat them, that probably gave them that little additional push that they needed because they have a very, you know, um, very good team. But they do still have a lot of young guys there, too. Like like I talked about Shai Boom and, and I know he he got a nice assist on one of the plays and Jack Devine's draft eligible. And I think he's a second round pick in the draft, maybe end of the first round. And he, you know, he had a good showing. Uh, Brink did get um, smashed into the goalie and did get a goal taken off the board for for his linemate. Was it Cole Gutman, right? It was legitimate goaltender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does this. But this is something I've talked about with Brink. He plays so hard offensively, and because he's not the biggest guy, sometimes – he just has this mindset where he's just going to do something. And that's why I want him to get physically stronger and not want Flyers fans to like think he should play in the NHL right away. Cause I think he needs to still build up his body a little more, but yeah. you know, but again, it's good. He got, he got a championship. They get a championship. Um, Magnus Krona did well, a great name. Uh, sounds like a Marvel character. I would make him a Marvel character. Yeah, he was fantastic in net uh, for Denver, especially late in the game. You know, the Minnesota State, of course, did early goalie pulls because you yeah. have to. It's the championship game. And um, he came up absolutely huge. And you're right. It's a fantastic name for a goaltender. Uh, yeah, I mean, DU had eight shots on goal total in the first two periods. And then, you know, they had 12 shots on goal in the third and five goals on those shots. So they did flip whatever switch they needed to in order to get it done. And uh, one of the goals in particular, uh, Rizzo's goal with Mazer, it was a great two-on-one. And honestly, the Minnesota State defenseman played it exactly the way you should have. Mm -hmm. Just the goaltender couldn't stop that shot uh, from Rizzo, which, you know, it happens. But I I think that um, it was just remarkable to see that that turnaround for DU and – one thing, uh, you know, before we get to the Bobby Brink timeline coming mm-hmm. up and, and what we can expect from that, uh, I was especially impressed. I hadn't really, you know, prior to the Frozen Four, like the the finals of the tournament, um, looked into really the coaching of DU and their head coach David Carl has a remarkable story that he, he had stopped playing because of health issues and kind of worked his way into coaching. He's a super young head coach for a D1 program in hockey. Um, And he's Matt Carl's brother. So Mm -hmm. Flyers connection there. He's also a ginger, which made me think like, "Hmm, maybe I'm not saying now. I'm just saying maybe he's somebody to keep an eye on for, you know, getting into the Flyers coaching system because I think it will take a while would work out. Yes. hundred percent, hundred percent. Denver, saying, they could pay money. They're not going to yeah, let him yeah. just walk. No, that is true. I'm just saying, let's just, okay. you know, 
make a note of that That's and, fair. Uh, and keep an eye on him. I, I did want to say forward. it seemed like each game Rizzo got better. And so yeah. I think uh, I'm not surprised. And Carter Mazur, like I said, this has been his year. I mean, I saw him really blossoming in World Junior Camp. And for the little time they played in the World Juniors and then in these playoffs, he's been fantastic too. But he he's expected to go back for another year. Um, Detroit, I don't think, is going gonna, is gonna to sign him. No, I don't think so either. But uh, turning to Bobby Brink and the timeline for his signing. Now, uh, we are recording this uh, Sunday, uh, early midday. So, you know, if anything happens later today, uh, as we're recording this, obviously, we'll talk about it on Tuesday's show. Right. But that being said, you know, it seems like a Monday signing makes the most sense. Yes. Um, now, with the Flyers having a back to back Tuesday and Wednesday this week, it seems like maybe he shows up Wednesday, sits in the press box for that game, and then maybe he'll get into a game or two this next weekend. Yeah, I could see that. I could see still, him still possibly getting in the Ranger game, but yeah, um, most likely I think the timeline you gave is right. I did want to talk about him because it's interesting. I was having a discussion with someone in the press box last night, and they were like, you know, I don't know if he's going to be the goal scorer that maybe you know fans hope because you know he's really showing off his playmaking. But the one thing that I've always known about Brink and, and have watched him for a lot of years now is – he's able to play with a lot of different level of line mates and a lot of times just wants to sort of like make that line go. And so the fact that he was playing with Carter Savoy, who really is a goal scorer, I think he was just naturally feeding Carter Savoy on, on these plays that a lot of people have seen and maybe thought, Oh, okay. Maybe Brink's going to be more of a playmaker. I think if you have the right guy with Brink when he's here and eventually Lehigh, uh, he'll be a goal scorer again. I just think that right now he's sort of playing the role. Like this is just, you know, that's their best goal scorer on the team. He wasn't going to try and mm -hmm. steal pucks from him or take shots because he's, you know, not that kind of guy. And and I think he did what he needed to do to make his line mates better. Absolutely. And that is an essential kind of player to have in your lineup. You don't want every guy to be like that, but no. you need at least a couple of them to be enablers and you know sometimes you notice that the most like you just talked about so yeah i think that we're in a really good position here in terms of of brink's next steps and obviously we will keep an eye on that and talk about it as soon as we have some news hopefully it will be a formal flyers announcement unlike finding out about ronnie Adderd via his instagram <laughs> <laughs> like man oh that must have been so upsetting for flyers pr but uh regardless of how, how we f find out uh excited to get bobby brink in the orange and black maybe they should do sky riding put it up in the sky <laughs> all right well we're gonna talk about my favorite thing we talk about every week and that is our nemesis of the week coming up next bet online is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and sports info Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and start of the Major League Baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. We've been talking about Built Bar for a long time on this show, and by now you should know how much we love them. But Built Bar is more than just protein bars. Have you tried their puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar, they are a treat. And they have some incredible flavors in the puffs. Cinnamony churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie, it's all so good. And all Built Bars, including those puffs, are covered in 100% real chocolate. Go to Built.com and scroll down to the macros chart. You're going to be blown away. They're high protein and low calorie, high fiber, but low carb. 
Most built bars have about 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and 4 net carbs with 17 grams of protein. If you compare that to a candy bar, it's going to have 240 calories, a ton of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. And the regular bars have delicious flavors too, like mint brownie, raspberry, and cherry barcia. New flavors are coming out all the time at Built Bar. They're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. So go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, you're going to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Russ, it's nemesis time. I yep. am so excited. And if you are newer to our show, uh, every Monday, we look at the calendar for the upcoming week. We think about the world of hockey and the world of the Flyers and say, who is our nemesis for this upcoming week as Flyers fans? And last week, we talked about, you know, Mike Yo, as you put it, as a substitute teacher. <laughs> And some of the problems that that has with, you know, the way he's coaching. We talked about it on this show in terms of the lineup, in terms of other things that are going on. And, you know, it reared its ugly head on Saturday night again. And so we were correct to have that be our nemesis last week. And so this week, I think, you know, just purely looking at the calendar of games ahead, we have a back-to-back -back coming up against the Sabres next weekend. And the Buffalo Sabres are an interesting team to me because they're, you know, a bit, um, you know, off and on right now. But they're a team with a, a lot of young prospects and a lot of potential. And, you know, while they aren't winning every game, I feel like they're a team that's starting to come together and having a plan in a way that the Flyers don't. And this is the Sabres. And they've been mm -hmm. kind of a, you know, running joke in a lot of ways around the NHL in terms of, you know, especially how they dealt with Jack Eichel and, you know, they're never going to get anywhere and they kept firing coaches and, you know, all of this sounds familiar, right? Like, similar to the Flyers. And yet it seems like even though where they are, which is only, you know, six points above the Flyers, they're a team that just seems to have the plan together in a better way than the Flyers do right now. And so that's kind of why they're my nemesis for this week, because it's like, this is what a bad team with hope could look like is the Buffalo Sabres. But I don't know. Would you agree with me on that? I do agree with you. And Owen Power is going to be in there. Mm -hmm. We're going to get to see him. And that's going to give them even more hope. And look, I can't tell you that there's not a little bit of a chance that the Sabres are better than the Flyers next year with Power. I can't tell you that. They, they might be. So I do feel that you're totally justified. Excellent. Do you have a, a particular nemesis outside of the Sabres? I do. Uh, I'm going to say it's going to be Alexander Ovechkin because right now they pretty much know they're going to make the playoffs and he's just trying to score as many goals as he can regular season to kind of keep, you know, climbing that mountain. And he just, he doesn't care. He has, you know, mm -hmm. no Fs to give and he, whoever's in net against him is going to get, just pummeled by all of his shots. And I noticed this last game, how many times they were setting him up so he can score goals. So I think that's going to be every Flyers fans nemesis. So like if it's Ronnie Adder and he's going to have to line up and block a shot from Ovi, there's going to be a lot of sore flyers after that game. I can imagine that being so. And yeah, it, it feels like Ovi is playing, you know, half of a, selfish game and half of a team game yes. right now and uh that that could not be good for the flyers <laughs> in a lot of ways this week all right wrapping up with our flyers fun thing of course it's the new lou nolan tribute video that the flyers put out it was really delightful they did include the stay classy moment which uh i was worried maybe they wouldn't because yeah. it's kind of a ding on flyers fans but I'm very glad they included that, and it was uh, much appreciated by. And they, and they included him going to get a cheese stick, and then having mm -hmm. to go and finish the game. 
Exactly. Exactly. Uh, it, it was very well done by the Flyers. So He's just a gem uh, of a guy, man. It's just great. Even yeah. Anthony Stolarz, after the game, went and congratulated Lou. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, see, that's that shows that's a nice thing, too. Shows the impact. All right, that'll do it for today's show. We will be back again tomorrow. We're going to talk more about Alex Ovechkin and those Washington Capitals. It's Phantoms Tuesday. Lots to talk about with that team and our prospects in Lehigh Valley. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. Send us in your mailbag questions via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers, or you can email us at LockdownFlyers at gmail.com. We will be having a mailbag this week, so make sure to get those questions in. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. You made us your first listen today. Now make your next listen Locked on Fantasy Hockey. Hosts Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone help you become the expert of your fantasy league. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Have a great day.